Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game video for you this evening. We've been messing around with this Space Invaders. Look at this. This is an original 1978 Space Invaders. Uh, the Midway version. And it was working great. But uh, whenever we repair these, you kind of have to let them cook for a while. So, uh, whenever you're working on vintage electronics, you can't just fix it and it works and then say, oh, it's ready to go. It doesn't really work like that. Because what invariably happens is, after it runs for a little while, something else dies on it. So that's what's happened with this one. It's still up and running, but one of the sounds has crapped out. So it's a simple little problem that hopefully will be a simple solution. So I figured I would film a little video of it. So, uh... Let me uh, set up a tripod and we'll play it a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look how beautiful this thing is though. Fantastic. All right, so look how cool the uh look how cool that backdrop is. Basically, the monitor is down in the bottom and it reflects up there's a mirror. You can actually see the line of it right there. There's a mirror angled at 45 degrees and behind the mirror there is a there is a moon-shaped piece of plastic. See, it's got a little break in it right here. And there is a light bulb back there, a black light. A white black light. If you don't know about those, check them out. Uh, it's a black light that doesn't glow black. It glows like uh, a light blue. Uh, and then there is a piece of cardboard that wraps around with all of the artwork on it. Uh, the sky scene. So, uh, just a really cool effect on the Midway version of the cabinet. So we're going to play it, and I'm going to show you the sound that's missing. So let me get a credit on it, if I can reach. So the sounds on this thing are analog. So they're kind of, um, I guess the sounds on a lot of things, well yeah, analog. Um, they're kind of created with resistors and capacitors and these little op-amp op -amp chips. Uh, but we're going to look into that here in a minute. So I'm going to start the game, and then there's only about six or seven sounds in Space Invaders. So I'm going to go over them with you and recreate the sounds, right? <laughs> so there is the famous thump. Dun, dun, dun. There's four sounds of them just coming down the screen. And then there's the shooting sound. Okay. There's the explosion sound when you shoot the invader. And then this guy, watch this. I missed him. <laughs> you heard the sound when he comes out. Woo, 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 woo. That's the UFO. And there's the explosion sound when my base blows up. But what the one we're missing is the one where he gets shot. That one. So it's supposed to go and make this kind of whirring noise. And it did, but it died. They got me again. Missed him. Okay, did you hear that? That was me winning an extra man. So that's it. That's all the sounds it's capable of making. So we're just missing that one where the UFO gets hit. Doesn't work. Alright, 
so no UFO explosion sound. So we gotta fix that. So uh, let's go look at the schematics and we'll figure out why, why it's doing that. Okay, so we're gonna look over the schematics. I am actually looking at the Space Invaders Deluxe schematics right now, and I'll show you why here in a minute if you decide to mess with these. So this is the Midway PCB. It's an L-shaped PCB. It's commonly called the 8080 PCB, the Midway 8080 PCB, because it uses an 8080 MPU. So it's like an L-shaped board, and it was on things like Gunfight and Tornado Baseball, and Sea Wolf uh, uses it. Uh, and Space Invaders, and a couple other games. So uh, the the smaller of the of the two boards that that connect together, and we'll see them here in a minute, uh, is the, um, uh, the the board that does the sound. So the way it works is it gets a signal coming from the mother the main board that comes up, and runs some things, right, um, and then comes over to here to this these two chips. Okay, so. This one is a 74-174. You can see it's just six data lines. And this one is also a 74-174. So the signals come up and they make different things happen. Now, depending on which line um, is selected, you know, it can control different things. So they've they very kindly labeled the chips in the midway schematic. So it calls this the saucer sound. So they're letting you know that the when the saucer comes out, and I think it goes, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> this chip is creating that. It's a 76477. Well, we've got that sound. So the signal, you know, the trigger comes through here and it makes it start happening, right? And then the, I guess this is the output. It comes over here. Now, if you look real close, there is a dot there and a dot there, but not a dot there. So that line they've just drawn over it. It doesn't connect. So the output of this comes over here and runs into uh, this op amp here. Actually, scratch that. I got that wrong. I got on the wrong one. So it comes out here and it goes down here. Follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. <laughs> and then goes to the amplifier over there. Did I still miss it? Here we go. Um, boom, boom. So it, it snakes its way down and is fed into the final uh, preamp, you know, which goes to the amplifier. So the way they did it was basically this is the input of all of the sounds. All of them come in right here. So this line here, all of the different sounds connect to here at some point to this one pin. Okay. So there's no uh, tuning or, or uh, there's no making any of them louder than the other ones or anything like that. Okay. So that's the saucer sound. So if you have problems with the saucer, it's got to be something right here. Okay. And then there's another one here. See the second line? It comes up. It comes over here. Boop, 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 boop. We're following it. We're following it. Okay, and it also comes in and has something to do with the op amp. Okay. So that's the second one. Now we're down to the third one. P. What does that say? This is all very tiny. That's why it's hard to read. P31, whatever. So it comes out, goes through a chip, comes up here, and comes over into this area, which is labeled as the missile sound area. So that's when you shoot. Now, you may notice that on this one, it sounds a little different than maybe another one you've played or whatever. If you've got one of the little cardboard uh, arcade one-up games, the little, little toys that they made, uh, it may sound a little different because they're not creating the sound the same. They're just playing a recording of the sound. So this is actually creating the sound uh, with these chips, which LM3900 is most of them, and all of these resistors and these little diodes and capacitors, it's actually making the envelope that makes that sound. 
that or whatever it shoots, right? So one of those lines comes up here and feeds this, basically triggers it, which makes it do its little thing. And there are a couple um, um, op amps there that are connected into each other and blah, blah, and eventually it gets over here and it sends it down to the, the final output stage. So all of this is the missile sound. So if you've got uh, a problem with that, this could be it. Now, there are two chips. So there's an M4 and then a P4. So depending on what side of what size of what part of the is screwed up, it could be one or the other of those chips. So you might get one that just goes because either this chip or this chip's messed up. If you really know what you're doing, you could tell just by listening to it what must be the problem. But these LM thirty nine hundreds are bad about dying. They die a lot, a lot, people. So that's that one. Okay, so then the fourth line here comes out and it goes into this area which says explosion. So the explosion is whenever your base gets hit. I'm calling the base the ship down at the bottom. I think it calls it the base on the uh, instructions. So uh, you have a separate LM3900 here called K at position K34 that creates that. And it's usually the actual chip. It could be the capacitors, but usually the actual chip has gone bad. Okay, so if you have an explosion problem, you're probably looking at that. And then the fifth line here comes out, and it comes down, and it comes into this section that says invader hit. So that's when you shoot one of the bad guys, but it's one of the thump, 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 thumpers. Okay, so same thing. It's uh, chip K4. So if you have a problem with that, it's usually that. And you can see where the output of this one is tied into the output of the explosion. Right? This one also, this invader hit one, if you look, there's a sneaky little line here that comes up from this area. So this is also the invader hit. If you look, the only connection of any of that is back to here. Right? So that's a K5, so it's also part of that sound. Moving right along. When I got an extra man, it went, it went, uh, something like that. That's this line. So this line here comes down to this 556 timer, and they're calling this the bonus missile base. And so the output of it comes through here, blah, 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 All right? But that one's working. So that whole chip, it seems like, is working just fine. Now the signals that run that chip also run this chip. See how they're tied together? So this chip, these top four lines come through here. And see how they're tied to four different diodes and different resistors? Okay, well that's your thumb, 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 thumb. Okay, so this timer here, this 556, is what controls all of that. And then the output of it goes here and connects to the other ones. So if you've got a problem with the thump, 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 that's it. Okay, and then finally down here at the bottom we have this last one hanging on. It comes down here into this area labeled as saucer hit. So that's our problem. The saucer didn't get hit. So the uh, it should be going woo, 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 or something like that whenever it gets hit. Okay, now here's why I'm showing you the Space Invaders Deluxe uh, schematics. It's because on this, the Space Invaders schematics, some of them are labeled wrong. So some of them say that the saucer hit is up here, which is called the invader hit on the other schematics and say that this line down here creates the invader hit. So they've reversed the text on some of the schematics. So this is Space Invaders Game Logic uh, A005. That one is wrong. That's It's got it labeled wrong. So if you're using that to try to solve your saucer hit or invader hit problem, you're gonna have a problem. Now here's another set of Space Invaders schematics. 
This is the B005 uh, schematics. And it, it says saucer hit here and invader hit down there as well. Let me see. Yeah, invader hit down here as well. So, uh, I don't think that's right. I think it's completely backwards. Did I go to the wrong one again? Here is the uh, the one from the like the Tato version of the same thing. I don't know if they're laid out the same or not though, but let's see what they say. Okay, so on the Tato version, they call it the trigger sound, which I guess would be the shooting. The flash, not sure what that is. And then the UFO hit. Now they're saying that the UFO hit has a, does that say 4016 chip in it? And then, you know, three, four, five, six, about seven gates, right? So if you go back to the Space Invaders Deluxe Manual, hmm, I don't know. We're going to have to be careful about this. So 40, zero, 06, and then one, two, three, four, six gates. Hmm. And then if you look up at the invader hit, it's got 40, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Something's wrong somewhere. So you've got a discrepancy here between the Space Invaders manual and the Space Invaders deluxe manual. So that kind of screws you up where you don't really know. Uh, which one is which. So we're going to have to get creative with it. What we're going to have to do is trigger that line and see if it works. If it works, then this section must be fine and our invader, our saucer hit can't be this area. It must be the other area. So we're going to have to manually check it um, because there's a discrepancy in all of the schematics. So we'll figure it out. Okay, so we're here in the back of the game. This is E4, and this is E5. It's hid by those wires. You won't be able to see it. But So the output of the pin that uh, we don't know about one of them is pin 12 on one of those two chips. So what I'm going to do is the two of the outputs are pin 10 and pin 12. I'm going to try to trigger those. Um, while the game is playing. You can't do it while you're just sitting here. So like for instance, that's pin 12. I'm grounding it. It won't work because all of the audio is muted uh, if you're not in gameplay. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a two-player game. I'm going to move one of the shields underneath one of the little platforms to kind of protect them for a few seconds where we might get 30 seconds that we can try it. And then I'm going to try to ground pins 10 and pin 12 on both of those two chips and just see which one of those four pins is missing. All right, so here we go. Put a couple credits on it. Start a two-player game because it'll last longer. Move the base over under one of the supports. you got to be quick, people, if you're the only one here. Okay. E4, pin 10 is the invader hit sound, pin, pin 12 is the free game sound, pin 10 is one of the thumps, and pin 12 isn't doing anything. Okay, that's not me. <laughs> So it's E5 pin 12 does not work. You see what we did there? E5 pin 12 does not work. Okay, so when you look on the Space Invader schematics, E5 pin 12, they say controls the invader hit. It's, it's wrong. It controls the saucer hit. So I've got two sets of Space Invader schematics. They're both wrong. And then if you look at the um, 
potato schematics, they appear to be wrong too. UFO hit. They're saying is the one with the 4016 as opposed to target hit, which is the 4006. So the 4006 uh, invader hit, they're saying target hit, and then UFO hit 4016 is over here. They're saying um, is the uh, UFO hit, also known as saucer hit. So the Tato schematics are wrong, and both of the Midway schematics are wrong, and they caught it and fixed it when they made the Space Invaders Deluxe schematics. This is the type of crap that makes you pull your hair out. Because if you don't know that, the only reason I knew it is because I've ran into it about five freaking times. And I always had to go check, just to double check, because it doesn't make sense that all three of the freaking manuals would be uh, wrong, but they are. So the saucer hit is absolutely triggered by pin 12 of this chip. So it's, it's definitely this one, which is correct in the deluxe schematics. So in other words, if you're trying to fix the Space Invaders uh, soundboard, don't even use the schematics. Use the Space Invaders deluxe schematics because they're correct. Which makes sense because it came out later and uh, they fixed it. Okay, so we're not getting that sound. So we've got two options here. We can, get, we can swap... Uh, chip M4, which is right here, or we can swap chip M5, which is right here, or it could be that 4006 chip as well, right? Now, since we don't even get a click or anything, I'm thinking it's M4, but it looks like M4 may be used for something else. Let's see, because they're only using half of it. What else uses M4? M4 is also used for the missile sound, which does sound a little weird. The missile sound sounds a little weird. So it could be that thing, one of those. So it could be one of these two gates is bad on the 3900. And it could be one of these two gates is bad on the 3900, making the missile sound sound strange. So I don't know. So I think I'll try that one first, and we'll just walk our way through it. You could test it with a logic probe and all of that, but what's the fun of that? All right, so I'm going to change out chip M4 first, and we'll see if that gets the saucer hit sound back. So here is the motherboard compared to my hand. My hand is exactly 12 inches long. I have... There's the motherboard. It's big. Okay. This is the main board. I believe this one's actually called the motherboard, and this one would be the daughter board. So this part is different depending on the game. Um, but the, the motherboard, depending on the ROMs, can run different games. Oh, there's the problem. There's no stickers over those windows. That's probably why the sound stopped working. Okay, so we're going to change M4. Uh, M is right here. M four. That's the one, people. Now it could be one of these caps too, but not usually. So I'm going to swap the chip, and then we'll try that. If it's not that, I think they, the other one they said was M five. But we'll do this one first and see if that changes the uh, shoot sound as well. Okay, folks, I put a new one in with a with a uh, socket. We're ready to put it back together and try it again. So that controls part of the missile sound and part of the um, part of the uh, saucer explosion. So it seemed like to me that since it's not triggering at all, I didn't even hear like a click or part of a sound that maybe that would be it. So that's my educated guess, um, which is about as good as a non-educated guess. So I'm going to go throw it back in and we'll see what we got. Okay, folks, so I went and I popped it back in, didn't fix it. So I went back and I changed the other chip, M5, and that appears to have fixed it. So here we go. Now, how would I have known that, though? 
by looking at any of those original schematics. Every freaking one of them was wrong. Mm, mm, mm. Word to the wise. Go adjust all of your Space Invaders schematics. They're all wrong. They're lying to you. So the missile sound sounding slightly different than other ones. Why is that? It's going to be because one of the resistors or something is a little bit off. So instead of it having like a 1K resistor somewhere, I might not be able to catch him. Nope, I missed him. Instead of it having like a 1K resistor somewhere, it might have a 1.2K or, or a where it's just out of spec. And maybe it's a 1.1K or something. And so it just makes the envelope a little longer or the... the the frequency slightly higher or something. Look, they're in my way. I can't test out my my sound thing. That's good. It makes it more suspenseful. You hear the buzzing? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's shaking something. The bass is so sweet, I'm gonna have to get like anti-vibration tape. Uh-oh, 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 it's even worse. Oh no, gotcha. All right, so everything's working. The only thing we haven't heard is the saucer. get across missed him by that much so the only trick I know on space invaders is if you shoot all the ones on one side like I'm doing oh how sweet it is If you get rid of a whole uh, column, then it takes them longer to march across the screen. So you got a little more time. Because see, now they got to march an extra couple whatevers. Missed. Boom, 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 boom. There's a loose screw somewhere. I think it's the bezel. I was trying to hold the bezel. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha, sucker. That's the end of him. Oh no, they got me. They got me back. Okay, we're gonna play one more game just to just to confirm, just to confirm that the UFO explosion is working. The saucer hit is working properly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now you gotta walk an extra inch across the screen. Gotcha. Oh, look, they're they're fighting back. Ho 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 ho!
Boom, 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 boom. Sounds pretty good to me, people. Yes, the bezel. All right, I'm gonna go get something and put and, and wedge in here so that we can hear how it sound, uh, so I can turn the sound up. Okay, so I turned up the sound and uh, I uh, put a little shim between the glass and the bezel so that it won't vibrate. Uh, our, our buddy Matt, every time we get one of these, he tells me this story. Whenever he was a kid, they had one at the, at the uh, mall and it was just sitting out in front of a store at one end of the mall. So he said you could be walking around the mall at the other end of the place and you'd hear thump, 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 thump. It echoing all through the mall because some somebody had it sitting out uh, in front of a store with the sound turned up. So I didn't turn it up that high, but in honor of Matt's memory here, we'll play it a little loud. you sucker all right folks my battery's dying so there you go I don't know oh I don't know if the battery dies remember I'm still playing come find me so make sure to leave your comments below check out our website lionsarcade.com 
You can support our channel by using the Amazon links down below if you're going to buy anything on Amazon. We thank you to everybody that's been doing that. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie, who has his own channel here on YouTube. Oh, ho, ho. who has his own channel here on YouTube. And uh, we're fixing arcade games, pinball machines, jukeboxes. My brother Donnie's fixing cars, vehicles, buildings, all kinds of cool stuff. So go check him out. I'm usually over there hanging out with him. And we will see you on the next video. Play Space Invaders.